Okay, we're going to continue to talk about Swarsha solutions. And uh, last time we uh, last time we talked about G00, GRR uh, can be found uh, through solving the Einstein equation for an exterior of a spherical source. <laughs> and But far away from the source, which means R much greater than R star, uh, it reduces the flat space. Obviously, this term is 0, this term is 0, is minus 1, 1. Okay, so that's just the flat space metric. Uh, so therefore, the deviation from flat uh, Minkowski sp uh, space-time is measured by this parameter r star over r. Uh, we can find the, the, the length uh, r star by f uh, going to the Newtonian limit. Remember, going to the Newtonian limit, the g zero is zero, zero is related to the gravitational potential in this way. And uh, you can figure out that the, uh, the R stars is related to gravity potential. Okay. But uh, the gravity potential for spherical symmetric source is minus gm over R. So therefore, R star over R is this. So R cancel, you get R star to be 2gm over c square. This is the so-called famous Schwarzschild radius. In general, uh, for our, uh, uh, in our cosmic neighborhood, uh, the solar system, or general, this R rate, the Schwarzschild radius is a very small quantity. Okay, and uh, for example, Schwarzschild radius for the sun is only plugging the mass of the sun uh, that only about three kilometers, and uh, for you plugging the mass for the earth. This the Schwarz radius for Earth is, is less than one centimeter. Okay. <clears throat> so the of course for exterior solution you must have R greater than the radius the source. So therefore the smallest you can get for uh, for this ratio <coughs> R is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is for example this, for the sun this, the solar radius plug in, and this is ten to the one part in a million, and uh, for the this ratio for the Earth, uh, so plugging the radius of the Earth is one part in uh, in billion. So 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 therefore the this correction is is tiny. Okay. Even though such tiny uh, correction that still had to be found to agree with observations whenever high precision measurement has been performed. So even though it's a correction, GI correction in fact is very small in our solar system, but still we're able to find experiments case this can be compared and and uh, so we now talk about how to interpret these Schwarzschild uh, coordinates. Okay, uh, we can even set up a, a Schwarzschild coordinates. You can think of the uh, the uh, uh, first of all, you can take a slice of th fixed theta you be equal to uh, 90 degrees, which means basically cutting across a plane, cutting across the source, and uh, and uh, and also uh, for given uh, times, uh, the, the various components off diagonal is equal to zero because for a given time. We can was able to talk about the space, so we can think of each position in the uh, phi theta is there's a, this a grid, okay, labeling the vertices by theta and the phi value. How these coordinates are related to distant uh, time measurements? Okay. So so-called the, for the proper radial distance rho, which means that you measure the distance with Time and the theta, of course, we already have fixed, and also fixed the, the azimuthal angle. So, therefore, the only thing is the radial part, and that we call the measurement length in the radial direction, and we call that the proper radial distance. Okay. Same way for proper time, we fix the, uh, uh, the r theta phi value, fixed position, and the uh, the time measure you make this the mirror length is related to proper time. Okay. So 
So in the absence of gravity, when the space height is flat, uh, it turns out that the, this radius and, and time is measured just the uh, bro and, and tau. Uh, same with the, the, rate, the coordinates r and t are themselves uh, can be directly interpreted as radio distance and time measured by an observer. Okay. So, for example, we're talking about a slice of a, a, for fixed for fixed uh, theta, and, uh, and so if you have a, a two sphere that cross here is a circle, with radius r one. Now, when gravity turns on, sp space time is curved. Uh, then the proper radius is no longer be. You know, the radius no longer where measure the proper radial distance. Remember our definition: dr is equal to uh, d rho squared equal to s squared. So we have to take the square root. And uh, that's for all fixed, it's simply all oh, except our variable, so for GRR, DR. Okay. And uh, the fact that <coughs> GRR is no longer equal to 1, means the spherical surface area are no longer uh, 4 pi r square. And uh, uh, so therefore, does not measure the directly the uh, r, no longer measure directly the, the proper radial distance. Same way, uh, the coordinate time is no longer measured at the proper time, and when the g zero zero is no longer minus one. Then the question: uh, so, this, so is this a, uh, so cutting across the plane? Even the plane is curved. So how to visualize this uh, curved uh, surface of uh, uh, with, with various r five values? The, uh, the the trick to, to to visualize such a curved plane is to to imagine uh, that uh, these are embedded in the three dimensional Euclidean space. So I have the metric here. I just copied up from the last slides. That's uh, this uh, uh, this is GRR term by Schwarz solutions one minus uh, Schwarz radius over R. And uh, dr square, and then we have the azimuth angle factor here again because theta is equal to uh, 90 degrees, so sine theta is equal to 1. Uh, so, to so imagine this embedded in the in the in the in the in the, in the uh, space, ch let's choose uh, cylindrical coordinates. So, therefore, the s squared cylindrical coordinate would be these uh, for so it's a flat space, so therefore, the cylindrical coordinates is the s dz squared dr squared plus the, so this is like polar angle part and plus a uh, 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 perpendicular z direction. And I can factor out this dr squared term here, so therefore this term to go dz dr squared plus 1. Okay, so this is purple goes to write similarly to, to the, what we have for the Schwarzschild uh, solution. Now, a comparison this, it tells me dz is equal to this. And then you integrate this, you find z is, 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 is this. So so basically z squared equal to a proportion to r. So, so the point is, notice this equation is just an equation of a parabola. Okay? It's a sideways parabola. In which, uh, in which if you take a fixed phi, okay, for, because for, with here is phi, so fixed phi, so just this first term is is for example along here, and this is in the in the uh, in, the, in that plane of, of fixed phi this parabola. So a whole series of parabolas, and so that's why you get this uh, uh, like a throw. Okay. So this is way how to visualize it was this flat plane. Once you turn on the gravity, which is located in the center, it is curved into a into a throw like this, so curved surface. So you can use in the uh, trick of uh, Euclidean three-dimensional space to for embedding. Even though this there's no such this is fictitious uh, uh, space, but we construct the space just for the purpose to visualize the curved uh, surface. And also, you notice that the solution 
uh, to Schwarzer solution is is, is is time independent. There's no time here. Yeah. Even though we never assumed that the spherical source is uh, static. Okay. This is trying to be a general result, so called Birkhoff's uh, theorem. So whatever source is spherical symmetric, the resultant exterior space time solution is time independent. I'm not going to prove, uh, provide a mathematical proof, but I think it's very useful, in fact, to get our intuition, it's better just the simple case. And because Newtonian equation solution is m, is, is, is uh, included inside the GR solution. So therefore, uh, this Birkhoff theorem must also hold for the Newtonian theory. And it's much easier to see how Newtonian equation can have this feature. So consider a gravitational field outside a spherical source, okay, for the Newtonian case, which is identical to the gravitational field of a point located at the center of the uh, of the spherical source. It was I have a spherical source and I have a potential, and this potential solution the potential is yeah, this solution is identical to as if the whole spherical source is concentrated at a point. This is the famous uh, Newtonian solution. Now, this proof depends only on spherical symmetry of the setup, irrespective of whether the uh, possible time dependence. So, so it doesn't matter whether the spherical mass is pulsating or exploding or whatever. The result feels the same as, as, it, as if it's a point at the, at the middle, and the, 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 as long as m doesn't change, uh, so you have uh, the, the same solution. So therefore, it's time independent. Uh, the, the analysis situation for 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 electromagnetism for electric charge spherical charge is that there's no monopole radiation. So like if you you have a pulsating sphere of, uh, of charge, that does not create a, a radiation. Does not create waves. Only a dipole uh, radiation and quadrupole radiation, etc. That's came from the same explanation. So this ends the second part of lecture 14.